welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Andy Oshu and Alan Cochran, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Andy, which category would you like? Um, sport, please. OK, your category is sport, and the answer is <clears throat> 11 days. What is the question? Is it how many days has it taken Madame Tussauds to melt down their Pavarotti waxwork? <laughs> This is a big opera crowd. <laughs> <laughs> is it how long did I have to spend by the hotel pool this summer before I saw a lady who wasn't reading Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it how much of the last month does Prince Harry remember? <laughs> is it when are G4S's security staff going to turn up at the Olympic Park? <laughs> Is it who was at Darren Day's family reunion? <laughs> <laughs> is it what reaction time is definitely too slow for a fighter pilot? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long's just right for a holiday? Because 14 days <laughs> is too long. <laughs> if, you go off, if you go for two weeks, you spend the You're last right? three days going, it's too long, isn't it? <laughs> Is it how long I've had this pesky erection, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take before the Essex Lion got a vajazzle? <laughs> Is it, um, how long does it take to watch 12 series of 24? Because <laughs> they're slightly shorter for the adverts, you see. When you watch the show, is that why your holidays feel slightly too long? <laughs> is it, in fact, according to his tax return, how many days' work did Jimmy Carr do last year? <laughs> hey, Jimmy, we're all there for you. <laughs> how long should you cook a mammoth <laughs> in, in a Category D oven? <laughs> Um, now that he's not famous, it takes Craig David to woo a girl. Does that need the correct answer? Very straightforward. Is it how long does the Paralympics last for? Very good. Oh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yes. The question I was looking for was how many days of sporting action are there in these record-breaking London Paralympic Games? The London Paralympics look set to be the most successful ever. TV viewing figures are in the millions and events are selling out within minutes of new tickets being released. Have you been watching the Paralympics? Yeah, oh, it's no. brilliant, wasn't it? The yeah. opening ceremony, I, I love that. Ian McKellen on stage. I did think it was a bit of a risk, though, booking Magneto when there were so many wheelchairs kicking around. <laughs> I saw all those wheelchairs flying through the air. I thought he's up to his old tricks again. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Stephen Hawking there as well, wasn't it? I wondered if it was actually Stephen Hawking or whether it was just Professor X in disguise <laughs> and it was all going to kick off, you know? And uh, Stratford would be reduced to what it looked like seven years ago. Is <laughs> it just me or was Hawking lip syncing? <laughs> There is an issue of tone here. Uh, <laughs> you, you've got to come with us some of the way uh, and then let the Daily Mail decide. Uh, <laughs> people have got weird preconceptions about it. That's one of the most astonishing things, is that, is, that, is that people are saying, this is incredible, this is really good sport. Of course it is. These are elite athletes. It's not a charity day out. It is <laughs> on the head for these people. These are highly competitive people. You think it's competitive in the field. You should see it in the athletes' village where they're fighting for the disabled car parking space. <laughs> what I found a bit confusing about the whole thing, though, yeah. I mean, I'm watching it and I'm loving it and I think it is fantastic, but I'm finding the classifications a bit confusing. Because yeah. until last weekend, for me, an F-42 <laughs> was a fighter plane <laughs> or a night bus to Brent Cross Shopping Centre. <laughs> 
Why did you go to a shopping it's centre a... at night? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the classification is it is confusing because there's so many different, yeah. there's all different levels, track field and all the rest of it. And they start from quite severe disabilities all the way up to the minor stuff. But I think they should give some able-bodied a chance by bolting on some like really mild stuff on the end. Like a really forgetful gymnast just forgetting their entire routine and just doing a dozen forward rolls. Uh, Ta-da! <laughs> They, they don't do that enough gymnasts, generally. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, you so improve so much because they something. always have to go... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they never go... Ta-da! <laughs> they should. They should. They should. I've been thinking about this. I, I, quite, I quite like to see some cheating in the Paralympics. Because, you know, in the Olympics, cheating's kind of boring, isn't it? It's, like, it's doping and stuff like that. But in the Paralympics, there's so much scope in cheating. You know, for, you know, really kind of wacky racist stuff. Things are <laughs> boing, you know. I'd like to see somebody win by coming from behind with a chin that shoots out on a step. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing! Do you know, I, I, a, a wheelchair with a fly wheel inside it. Like, you know, like, the, like a, like a wind-up car. And then, so that one of the people suspiciously is backed into his starting <laughs> thing. And then goes, whoa, fuck! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Very of all the, fi the events that have been fantastic, and the wheelchair basketball oh, yeah. has been because it, it's like it's like a, this is a genuine. This is not in any way a mock-up. This is a sport that these are the best people of the world at, mm -hmm. right? The uh, but it's properly brutal. Uh, if for no other reason you knock somebody over, the rest of the team just leaves. Uh, <laughs> And there's a guy, and it's really like, he's gone, he's dead to us, leave him! <laughs> he, he, he can back up again, he can join in again. That's... They do, they do this, they just spring back up yeah. into their chair. I've never seen anybody do anything quite like it. Well, uh, well people... very rarely do you see somebody in a wheelchair be falling over and everyone going, no, leave him! Uh, <laughs> he has to spring back up. You say that, but I live in London. <laughs> true, true. My, my favourite event is the blind running. I love it. When they run with a guide, yeah. that is fantastic, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Because you're thinking, you know, obviously when what happens is the people who can see, they have to tell the one who can't see, they have to say, tell them when to overtake and stuff like that. But you're thinking, what happens when the blind runner is full of running and the guide is knackered? <laughs> you know, they're going, oh, no, no need to overtake just yet. <laughs> no, no, we're doing fine. <laughs> we're in the lead, we're in the lead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we can't sit, we can't sit. It's like I saw uh, Libby Clegg, who's a visually impaired runner, and she runs mm. with a black guy, but not all, not all of them run with guides, so it feels like a little bit of an unfair advantage. She's, she's basically being, being dragged round by Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that to me, said, yeah, but they're, they're, you know, they're being pulled by fast runners. They're not being pulled, though, are they? You don't see eight blind people <laughs> being dragged over the line. <laughs> strapping you. Where are we so, going? Where are we going? Ho horse racing, that's clearly cheating, because those jockeys have got massive horses underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my favourite bit of, of commentary was, was an interview, actually, in the, in the proper Olympics, there was an interview with a guy called uh, Ross Murray, I think. He was a British runner who not qualified for the semi-finals of the 1500 metres. He was a prodigy of Steve Cram. He'd come like sixth or something in his race. And the guy said, well, what went, what went wrong, Ross? And he went, well, I came from the North East. He said, well, I think it's, you know, it's, to be honest, it was a lot harder for me out there than it was for the Ethiopians and the Kenyans because, you know, they've been hard at it for four years. And to be honest, I've been hard at it since January after two years on the latch. <laughs> watch any of the sports and think I could do that. I just really? find one of, the, yeah, one, of the, one of the few depressing aspects of the Olympics is just constantly watching sports and, and inevitably comparing yourself to, to the athletes. And we, this is hopeless. Because I mean, I'm sitting at home watching <laughs> Usain Bolt <clears throat> run 100 metres in under 10 seconds. My personal best at the 100 metres is 80 metres. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually that depression of what they achieve is even worse for the Paralympics because <laughs> they conquer so many different challenges and I watch it and it just brings me down because I think I once didn't go running because I had a sore finger. <laughs> Did you watch, uh, do you watch any of the canoeing? I love yeah. the canoeing. The reason I love the canoeing, my favourite bit of it was that there was a double kayak pair, British pair, called yes. Florence and Hounslow. And I thought, that is the most unlikely town twinning in history. <laughs> 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 
Oh, here you go. We, we have the Uffizi Gallery. Yes, we have works by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. And you? Oh, we have a very large branch of staples. <laughs> And the points go to Chris Hughes-Church. <laughs> now we play a round called Oscar Pistofius. This <laughs> game involves Stuart, Andy and Andy, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... The police. Andy Parsons. <laughs> Police, you say? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was going to be bondage. <laughs> so the police often into bondage, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> the police, uh, they've, um, they've done away with annual fitness tests. Apparently, uh, the, uh, the only people who are going to get fitness tests now are uh, some of the specialist positions, marksmen and women and dog handlers. And you're thinking, well, surely they're the only set of people who don't actually need to be fit. <laughs> they never need to chase a suspect, do they? They can either shoot them or set the bloody dog on them. <laughs> and also, the police, they've been keeping our DNA for 12 years. 12 years, right? Even when we've been innocent and they were quoting some statistics from the Jill Dando Institute for Crime Science. Now, I have a few problems with the Jill Dando Institute for Crime Science, <laughs> not least because they've yet to find the killer of Jill Dando. <laughs> that, to me, would be like having the Lord Lucan missing persons helpline. <laughs> The next subject is dating. Who wants to come in that? Okay. And you. Yes. Well, I think that dating and technology do not go together. This is a true story. It was in the Metro, so it must be true. <laughs> a brother and sister who were separated as children met each other again through a dating website and they only found out three weeks into dating. And it was reported as a good news story as well, because the woman was like, oh, my God, we've got so much in common. I'm thinking, yeah, like your DNA. <laughs> like, this is only a good news story if they found out before anything happened. Like, you don't want to find out like this. Like, oh, my God, my brother had a mole on his dick. <laughs> what did you say your surname was? <laughs> Uh, there are some good things about technology and dating. There's this app, Grinder that gay guys are using. It, uh, if, for those of you who don't know, basically, uh, it tells them how far they are from another available gay man. I was telling a friend this, and he was like, so it's like a tracker. It's not a tracker. <laughs> okay, you're not hunting gay men. <laughs> It's not that, it's not that. And also, the guys have to be registered on the website. You know, you can't use your iPhone as a gay doll. You can't sort of just go up to someone and go... Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you are fabulous. <laughs> but anyway, um, I downloaded Grindr onto my phone, and there were like... As soon as I fired it up, there were like 70 registered guys within 10 metres of me. It was amazing. It's, do you know what it was like? You know that scene in Aliens, where they're surrounded <laughs> by the aliens? Like, 10 metres. <laughs> That's in the room. <laughs> you can't be reading it right. I am reading it right. <laughs> They're coming through the goddamn wall. <laughs> I'm not saying shoot gay men. There's a film called Alien. <laughs> okay. okay, that leaves us with Stuart. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> and the topic is family. <laughs> Homesick. <laughs> Does my wife think I'm a control freak? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> she used to hate that joke. <laughs> now she loves it. <laughs> the other night there at a party, my wife got drunk and told everyone she invented the echo. I said, listen to yourself. <laughs> I'm not thrilled that my wife's into bondage, but my hands are tied. <laughs> pretty woman. I call her doll face because she's so pretty. And she's missing an eye. <laughs> I think we were both on bumper cars when I first caught my wife's eye. <laughs> I'm 
Now, we actually met at a sushi restaurant, and last week we went back for old time's sake. Actually, I don't think it's pronounced that way. Thank you very much, your father. Points at the end, that round go Andy, Andy, Henry Sebastian. Now, we play a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teams, why was this man in the news recently? Oh, it's um, what's happened in Vegas, not staying in Vegas. Is yes, that... very much so, yeah. Why is that? Because uh, he was playing strip billiards and um, we all found out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's just, it's hijinks, isn't it? It's just Harry. He takes after his dad, whoever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Should they have printed the pictures? It was a weird <laughs> moment for newspapers when The Sun printed the picture saying, here's the picture you've all seen already. It's like the opposite of news, isn't it? <laughs> The Royals haven't actually complained after they've printed the picture, no. have they? Because I guess they're thinking, <laughs> well, you know, if he's naked, at least he's not wearing a Nazi uniform. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I didn't think strip billiards sounded a bit... Strip billiards? It's hard enough dating as it is, but if you're waiting for a, a girl who understands the rules of billiards, you're going to die alone, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so billiards sounds so posh as well. It's like, yeah. were, they, were they done with playing Spin the Pauper? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, though, that he was a gentleman because in the photos he had his hands over the breasts of the woman. Yeah. And you're thinking, obviously, the definition of gentleman has changed a bit since <laughs> I was born. <laughs> it's nonsense spinning it. Oh, he's just being a normal soldier. He is. Yeah, he's being a normal soldier. Like all those other soldiers with their $900 a night private bungalows in the grounds of a Las Vegas mansion. It's this bullshit that we get sold the whole time. Oh, he's just like us. They're just like us, the royal family. They're not. They're not just like us. You have never accidentally ended up in a part of your house you've never been in before. <laughs> Not like us. <laughs> the kitchen. Apparently, uh, though. <laughs> <laughs> 1970s joke. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the, the troops in Afghanistan, they've all come out in support, haven't they? Yeah. By uh, taking photos of themselves, you know, stripped completely naked. Yeah. And it, it's, basi it's basically carry, <laughs> carry on up the Kyber all over again, isn't it? <laughs> Those are actually, uh, they were taken before the Harry thing. This is just down to government cutbacks. Yes. <laughs> it's they're doing it in support of Harry. They're not, are they? They're taunting him. They're stripping naked in the Afghan sun, going, try it over here, ginger lad. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes naked out there, he'd look like a baby bell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there are, there are websites of uh, squaddies and squaddies' families who have supported Prince Harry decided to... Uh, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not much of a royal, but it's not... You know, I still think there's, a, there's uh. an important principle uh, here that, you know, it's just, if a man wants to be naked at a party, then we should support that as much as we can. That's why I published this particular photograph. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, I'm proud to, proud to do that. Yeah. Interesting. Very, uh, Interesting that you got an All Blacks tattoo there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. Yeah. You now well, know Mary. I briefly played for the All Blacks before that photo <laughs> was poorly doctored. Uh, <laughs> so, you think my tattoos are bad? You see Andy's tattoos. Andy's tattoos are terrible. They, I mean, he really has... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Hugh, Hugh, we're not saying that you're, you know, but I thought you were generous to do it amidst foliage, which I thought was this <laughs> case. Growing sense of inevitability, yeah, Chris yeah. must now realise yeah, that yeah. his is possibly the most erotic yeah. of all. <laughs> Again, that is real. That is real. Uh, well, and that has uh, confirmed many people's suspicions that if you see me naked, there is a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whose famous face was recently given a makeover? What? Is this a Jesus story? This is the Jesus story. This is like this Spanish woman who tried to restore this uh, painting and, and just ruined it. She did. Where was it? Yeah, it was in... It was, uh, it was in Spain. Spain. It was in yeah. Spain. Yeah. Trying to Where find the Spanish point. ladies are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is it? And they do dance well. <laughs> uh, it was in Zaragoza. It was in the, uh, the Sanctuary of Let's Mercy see. Church in Zaragoza. That's uh, it. And, and the authorities were very cross with her. Because the were. only people who are allowed to touch up in a Catholic church are, of course, the priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yes it was a church, uh, the Sanctuary of Mercy Church near Valagotha, and there uh, is a century <laughs> old. <laughs> You really brought Spain to life for us there. Yeah. You have to make an effort with foreign names. You can't just be Zeds and... And you say Paris, Th do you? Zaragoza. Zaragoza. Uh, Wanker. <laughs> so, anyway. Hola, que tal? Sí, bueno. <laughs> so the worst thing is, I do the Spanish accent, it goes Mexican incredibly quickly, yeah. There was a fresco in a church in Zaragoza. This fresco was incredibly beautiful. <laughs> they call it El Guapismo. Uh, anyway, there was a fresco in a church in Zaragoza. Where is the, where is the fresco? <laughs> it's in a church. church in Zaragoza. In a church in Zaragoza. In a church in Zaragoza. Zaragoza. Si. Uh, Zaragoza. Yeah. Yeah. How old was it? It was a century, it was 100 years old. A, hundred, a, a whole bit. hundred oh, years. A whole hundred years a whole, old. What a story this is. <laughs> <laughs> It's touched up a hundred year old it painting was a very on a wall. Quiet week. It, Zaragoza is a very sleepy town. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's much more the case that it was it, that it was decaying because of where it had been painted, right? And so it's this like is how the fresco looked originally. This is actually a photo that was taken some years ago. Now, is he, long, he, he was this yeah. is the fresco that's painted by Elias Garcia Martinez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going for it. I'm going do for it, it man. Do it. Right. This is how it looked just recently because the plaster on which it, it, it was built had decayed, oh. right? So this is yeah. how it looked uh, now. Okay. So a nice, nice old lady, a nice Varagoffan lady, uh, <laughs> went in and repainted it. And just, 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 just paint up. And this is how it looked when she'd finished. <laughs> She's done a great job of it. <laughs> Here's one I sent in earlier. You really should be. Do 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 so she also rounded them off as well, like she like twisted it around and the whole thing. She thought she'd done a really good job though, because everyone that she showed it to went, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Completely fair. We don't actually know what Jesus looked like. You didn't know what Jesus looked like. Just assume that he looked like. Yeah, there's a, who knows? He looked like. Yeah. Let's shut up the room. I tell you what. I'm yeah, always... This might have been the bit that from the Bible. Oh, yeah. I'm Jesus. <laughs> Missing in the Bible where Jesus comes in yeah. after a botched face job. Yeah. He'll up and everyone says, have you had any work done, Jesus? No! No! Well, no, you know, like, my, you know my furry hat? <laughs> my furry hat goes all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> she's actually seeing the restorer next week, isn't she? Because she's got to tell the restorer exactly what material she used <laughs> to do that. And you're thinking all she's going to produce is half a potato. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is, she is probably older than the fucking fresco. <laughs> Right. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. The first subject is rejected questions from this year's exams. <laughs> If sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C, what are the chances that you're ever going to use this in your sodding that <laughs> old life? According to Germany, how much is Greece worth? <laughs> One mark. <laughs> <laughs> Exam board of Zaragoza. Paint Jesus. <laughs> Jonathan is a Nigerian prince. What are your credit card details? <laughs> Three girls in this hall are pregnant. Who's the daddy? <laughs> Compare the following. A, the market. B, the meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Heat the crystals until they produce a vapour. <laughs> Inhale. <laughs> the exam seems easier now, doesn't it? <laughs> Without swearing, describe Peter Andre. Mental arithmetic. Count up the voices in your head. <laughs> Using the paper provided, roll a joint and pass it round. <laughs> Does this look infected? <laughs> in the recent Olympics, Great Britain won three times as many gold medals as Australia. That's not a question, just a statement. <laughs> One Direction are incredibly popular. Explain. <laughs> Sport. How do you spell akabusi? Is it A K B U C? <laughs> yes or no? If Steve eats two apples, an orange, and a banana, why is he such a fat fucker? <laughs> OK, next topic is things you didn't hear at the Olympics. And that's yet another gold medal for Ireland. <laughs> This is one thing I grew tired of was the Canadian national anthem. Uh, <laughs> well, there's Prince Harry in the crowd. I would recognise those buttocks anywhere. <laughs> well, what an opening ceremony. James Bond, Harry Potter, Mary Poppins showing the world that the greatest Britons are fictional. <laughs> Sweltering conditions here at the ladies' beach volleyball final, but still those four blokes in the front row haven't taken their coats off. <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> and that's the starting pistol, and they're running. They finished. <laughs> to be honest, I usually do the snooker. <laughs> Welcome to Greco-Roman wrestling, where a man from Greece and a man from Italy wrestle each other for the one euro coin they found on the floor. <laughs> Claire balding there, but very slowly, and she's still got more <laughs> than Colin Jackson. <laughs> and the long jumper from Sierra Leone there, raking the sand for landmines. <laughs> got to admit he's pretty fast for a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at the 400 metre hurdles. Those are very big hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is jumping up and down with delight, which will probably see them disqualified from the wheelchair marathon. <laughs> the treble. It's the three he wanted. Usain Bolt has really enjoyed his night with the Swedish women's handball team. <laughs> and next up, it's the dressage, or as it's properly known, river dance for horses. <laughs> and now it's time for the clean and jerk, and clean again with an old sock. <laughs> The points go to Alan, Andy, and Andy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Allison, Hugh Dennis, and Stuart Francis. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Andy Osho, and Alan Cochran. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>
Another chance to catch the Rob Brydon Show tonight on BBC Two with Jason Manford, Neil Morrissey and Ronan Keating at 11.20 after Newsnight next.